Hey guys, this is Townie Sim Builds here, back with another build. Now this build is something a little different and outside of my comfort zone, but I was super inspired by the new curved wall feature that was added to the game. This is actually a rustic converted water tower, and this idea was inspired by a video from James Turner, um, where he built this kind of like cottage farm uh, mansion type of build, and in the back was a debug water tower where he made this platform where sims could actually generate their own renewable energy. Um, but I wanted to do my own, make it kind of abandoned and make it this kind of refuge for a runaway or a hermit to live in possibly. So without further ado, let's go on in and check out the build. All right, so here we are with a full view of the old Henford water tower. Um, as the name implies, this lot was built in the cottage living world of Henford on Bagley. So we have this really nice mountain landscape. The tower really overlooks a quite a spectacular view of the town. You can see some of the houses in the back. Um, and there are also a lot of these ruins that I've never explored. Um, but I figured that this was a great place for the water tower. It kind of nestled it well, and you can see it's kind of a relic of the past. Looking at the building itself, you can see that I did in fact take advantage of the new curved wall feature, uh, which was super fun to play around with. It definitely has um, some kinks and glitches to work out, but it shows really great potential. Looking at the lot and the terrain itself, I did try to create uh, some type of forest area to kind of blend it in the background. Um, you can see the makeshift farm and also these stumps, which were really cool. Um, some of them are just these like decorative items but a lot of the stumps are also home to little creatures like bunnies, rabbits, and birds that will visit you on this lot as well. Um, looking at the tower itself, it's got a really great view. Um, I tried to make it kind of um, rusted and decayed. You can see some of that like flooring peeling away in the metal there, uh, which was really super fun to create. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna check out the lot in different types of lighting very shortly. I'm trying to get the camera right here. But here we are with the, I believe it's the afternoon lighting, the evening lighting, which was really beautiful with that sunset in the background. And finally, we do have the night view, which I thought was super cool with the glow of those little makeshift lanterns. And with that, we're gonna take a look at the inside of this water tower. All right, so here we are with a view of the very first floor. Um, kind of like what I showed you guys earlier, this is kind of the forested area where um, there's a lot of grass overgrowth. We have some stumps with animals that will come and visit you. And here is a look at the makeshift garden. It's rather small, but I figured that a person living off of this land um, would definitely want to grow their own crops here. So there's definitely ample space. At the first floor of the water tower is, I guess what I would call a converted shed of types. There is a little bit of overgrowth here, but we do have some other objects, maybe some cargo. I know that there are some like seedlings in there, some buckets, and then some um, farming equipment there as well. I also like these big um, plumbing pieces from Get to Work. It really makes it feel very industrial, like you are in fact in a water tower. Going back over here, we have this kind of spiral metal staircase. Um, I tried to fit the vibe of this water tower in using those like rustic industrial type of materials. And I really love making these little um, lanterns everywhere. They're purposely mismatched because I figured that, you know, a person's gonna kind of use whatever materials they can find to make appropriate lighting. And entering, you can see that this is the uh, type of mudroom, I guess I would call it. And there is a workstation here as well. Um, this is the hermit that I put in the lot to kind of test it out. He's pretty outdoorsy and he does enjoy this lot so far, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, but yeah, he can work on his carvings here. There's a nice little sitting area. Moving to the second floor, this is the um, bathroom slash, uh, I guess, washing area, I would say. And this was really cool. I actually made these wooden dividers. I figured that, again, if someone were living here and converting the space, they try to, you know, make their own dividers out of maybe lumber or pieces of wood that they would find. So we do have a bucket to wash clothes. There's a hamper there. And then going into the bathroom, it's very rustic. You can tell that, you know, again, this person is kind of scrapping everything together. So, uh, you know, the bathtub here, the toilet are very like hodgepodge put together from different pieces. But we do, we do manage to have a nice sink that we did find. I personally love these apple crate boxes. I think they add a really nice touch of you know, someone who's just kind of assembling furniture from things they find in the environment. 
and you'll see them again here in the very top floor. Uh, this is the main living area. It features a kind of open concept, I guess you'd say, uh, kitchen and living room. Looking at the kitchen itself, it is pretty simplistic to stick with the theme. We have this old wooden fridge. We have the apple crate again used as a countertop. And then we also have this little Pueblo inspired oven to cook some really great food in. Um, going over here, we have more of these makeshift lamps. We have more makeshift chairs and even some embroidery just to add like another activity for your Sims to do here. Uh, the top floor also has more of these pipes to add to that uh, water tower realism, I guess I would say. And then we also have a lot more um, cargo over here as well. Some, maybe some supplies, some fruits, um, just some things to live off. Even a little garden gnome. Over here is the living room space. Um, again, we're filled with makeshift chairs to fit the vibe, but I think it's pretty cozy. You can see this nice um, touch of blue with this easel. We have some sculptures here. Um, just a really nice cozy space that I think is fairly well lit. Again, I love these apple crate boxes. I think they fit perfectly here. And I also included some of these uh, photographs, which I think were really cool. Maybe if they're a uh, runaway sim or an old hermit, they kind of want to reminisce on their old family and friends. Moving over here, you can see the funky woodwork that is in here. And I thought this was a really fun touch of someone who's haphazardly creating these room dividers. And going into them, we have finally the bedroom. Um, these cots I felt were a perfect fit. They felt very camp-like and they kind of combined two of them to create a full bed. And we can see some nice touches in here with more of the plumbing coming through with the tower. Um, some collected maybe signs that were used as decoration and also a chest for some clothes and just some more um, cozy decor in here as well. All right, so moving outside, we do have a nice view of the um, rust and decay that I mentioned earlier with the kind of jagged flooring coming out through there. We do have some moss that's grown and some more big pipes to add to that feel. We do have a telescope to kind of stargaze. And finally, we have these nice kind of cheap plastic lounge chairs to get a great view. Now, looking at the lot as a whole, it's a fairly simple lot. This is in fact a 30 by 20 lot, so it can definitely fit a variety of even bigger lot sizes if you would like. The lot type is set to residential, um, given that you have a runaway sim, a hermit sim, or maybe just a couple even who likes the outdoors and wants to live off grid. Uh, this would be a really great spot for them. And in terms of packs used, this is super, super bare bones. All we have, of course, are the base game, but also get to work and cottage living. So you really don't need too much to download and use this lot. Alrighty, and that is it for the old Henford water tower. As always, I really love to hear your thoughts on this build, especially given that it is quite a quirky and interesting build. I think it allows for some really unique gameplay, um, even potentially with the werewolf pack. If you have a rogue werewolf who's kind of living out by themselves, I think this would be a really cool spot for them as well. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. Um, if you do end up using this world, as always, I love seeing screenshots. I love hearing your stories. And let me know if you'd like similar lots to this in the future. I love creating abandoned and um, derelict type of things like this. And with that, this has been Townie Sim Builds signing off. Thanks again for watching, guys.